Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange, and this week in 3D Battle Model News. Again, kind of going back to last week's video, I had talked about how I had discovered a few more things on the retired list from Fascinations, and I went back in the meantime and re-reviewed that list, and there is one model that I, it's a couple of models I wanted to add to the list, things that are retired now. One, I think, has been retired for a while, and I may have mentioned it before, and I'm not sure, so I wanted to touch base on it, and that is the Pan Am China Clipper. And I'm guessing that's both the regular sheet, two-sheet cardboard, like, hanging version and the box version, because at one point, Metal Earth had both the just standard style and they had a gift box set, which, fortunately, I did get the gift box set. Nice decorative box, and it also came with a little newspaper clipping in it about the Pan Am China Clipper. Also, the RQ-170 Sentinel, which if it was up last week, I missed it. I think I have that one, but I haven't built it yet. It just kind of kept getting pushed to the back burner, being an older model. And sometimes I try to keep up with fewer requests and newer models. So there's so many models out there, it's hard to do them all, especially when you're making videos and whatnot at the same time. But those are two more I wanted to add to the list of last week's retired models. I'm going to try and keep a closer eye on that now that... Things are starting to occasionally retire. So, you know, a couple of years ago, it never occurred to me that these models would no longer be available someday, but such is the way of things. As far as Metal Earth and Fascination's website, there's nothing new showing up this week as well. However, there are some rumors in the works through some trusted sources. I have heard a little bit about some possible upcoming models, and these would be Hobby Town in store exclusive models. I've heard from a couple of different sources. It looks like they're basically going to have kind of a recolor of some older Ford models. From what I'm hearing, it's a 1908 Model T and the 1965 Ford Mustang models are going to be given some color, specifically red color, and issued as a Hobby Town in store exclusive model. Now, this is kind of early information, nothing is set in stone, so things could change. I don't have any pictures. I don't know if it's going to be just a recolor of the existing model or if they're going to take the time to actually redesign it some. For me, I, I really think the, the Mustang could use a slight redesign and improvement. Not to say it's a bad model, but I could see where they could improve. I mean, it's an older model. They could make it a little more streamlined. Whether or not they're gonna do that, I have no idea. But from what I'm hearing, possibly these models will be available as early as fall. But as with anything, there'll probably be some delays. I'm guessing more like winter before these things are available. As far as the model numbers, from what I'm hearing, are going to stay the same with just the addition of a letter on the end. So the Model T is MMS051. This new version is going to be MMS051R. The Ford Mustang MMS 056R, R for red. In the latest Metal Earth newsletter, which came out during the week last week, they've highlighted the upcoming Duesenberg model that we've talked about, and it's also been showing up on their page. But they also introduced this month's latest challenge. So I like to announce that because these are creative and fun challenges. This week, welcome. It's got, it starts off kind of welcome to Metal Earth land. Show us your Metal Earth spirit to participants to send marketing at fascinations.com. Their creative image of a land created, created of Metal Earth could win a mystery bundle of models. Rules, creativity, creativity, creativity. Deadline, August 12th, 2019. When submitting your entry, please include your full name and mailing address. Winning entries will be featured in next month's newsletter. Interesting create an entire world of Metal Earth. I know I certainly have some ideas, but I'm excited to see what other people come up with. I do want to say congratulations to the latest winners, Jacob Gardner, who has several shots, wonderful shots of the Apollo, the CSM, the LEM, and the Saturn V rocket with gantry in sort of space and, well, not sort of gantry, but the other ones are space and the gantry is kind of inland waiting to launch. Really nice pictures. And Wayne Melbourne for a great sort of sneaky dinosaur in the jungle shot. Pretty cool. And Peace School's not showing any new models this week. However, I will say the Congo Battleship and the Tang Paradise models that I've talked about previously are now available on Crazy Toys, both on their crazytoys.co.uk and the AliExpress store, as well as a few other stores on AliExpress if you're not wanting to get them from Crazy Toys. 
but it looks like those two models are available, though I haven't seen anything about the Princess Jasmine model yet. But looking around as I do at the different stores, I did notice a couple of new Micro World models on another AliExpress store. I thought these were very interesting. The kind of one of them kind of amused me this morning. I'm going to start with, however, the Power Engine Machine model, which I believe is just basically a jet engine model, which is really neat looking. It's jet engine. It's the retail price in the U.S. dollars is $16.78. The one that I saw, uh, length of 10.2 centimeters, width of 4.8, and a height of 6.5. So everything's in meters, centimeters on the AliExpress site. Looks to be stainless steel and brass, two sheets and 84 pieces. It looks to be a very neat and detailed model. How difficult it will be to put together. Hmm, micro world can be a little bit tricky, but definitely doable. The one that amused me, however, were the refuse sorting bins. And it's basically four different trash cans, but not trash cans, but refuse. So there's recycling involved. And I thought that was very interesting. And the first thing that popped in my head, and I actually made a joke about it to a friend this morning, was Disney came out with the trash can models. And well, I guess Micro World had to one up them and say, you know what? Hold my sake. Here we go. We're doing trash can models. Check this out. However, looking more deeply into it, they are about $20 for the set. It looks to be, again, four different models, so I could be wrong. According to the information, it's six sheets, multicolored. Now, the dimensions are listed at 4.5 by 5.3 by 6.3, length, width, height, and that's, I'm assuming, in centimeters again. And I'm assuming that's just one individual refuse bin, though I don't know if they're doing it. Hopefully they're just considering one and not trying to measure them all together, but I'm not really sure. Now it looks like, however, it may come with little sort of clip-out plates that have pictures of different types of refuse in it, and the pictures that they display underneath make it look as if this is possibly an educational toy to teach people, children, about how to sort their waste so that it goes in the appropriate bin. So actually, while it's kind of amusing that they've made models of trash cans, it's, it's done with an educational purpose, and I kind of respect that because, well, honestly, we need to take care of these things before we completely destroy the planet. We should try to recycle and save our resources because this is the planet we have. But I won't go into that. I think it's really neat. On the surface, it's kind of a silly model, but it has an educational purpose, so I kind of want to get it now. Now, last week's question of the week, I did really intend to pose it to others. However, a few people took it that way and that's fine. I was basically trying to answer someone else's question and expand upon it and I did get over a couple of responses, which I'm not complaining, pretty cool. And it was about the difference between whether or not you twist or fold tabs and how I feel about that. A couple of people shared some stuff and I wanted to take a moment to read their responses. Shane Stribley, great update Brad. About this week's question, I fold when I can and twist when I have to. Having said that, I mainly use my twist and fold method where I twist and pull about 40 degrees and then fold and flatten. Makes a nice, secure, and neat connection. Best of luck with your upcoming classes. I wish I could get there. Cheers from down under. I respect that. I, you know, it's one thing I didn't cover. I have done that in the past where you're kind of doing a combination of twist and fold. So I have done that in situations where I really needed that secure twist and connection, but I wanted to try and make it look neater. So you give it not a full twist, but enough of a twist to secure it and then try to fold it down and flatten it. There is something to be said, and I've had this experience many times where I've twisted something, then realized I made a mistake and had to untwist it. And it's something about the act of twisting that puts a kink in there. Even when you try to untwist it, you still have a bit of a kink and it's difficult to separate the parts oftentimes. So just putting that slight twist in there and then straightening it back up and folding it over can sometimes be more secure, but I also respect the giving a little bit of a twist, then folding it over so you have kind of the best of both worlds and a bit of a compromise. So I definitely respect that and have done that, although not very often, and I didn't think about adding that in my last video. John Finnegan Jr., good luck with your upcoming class, Brad. In your video, you talked about bending or twisting tabs on most of my tabs that are seen. I will give it a little twist and then bend it over so they are flat. You can't twist too much because you can break the tab when you bend it, so just a small twist. Now again, I respect that, kind of the same thing that Shane Stribley was saying, give it a little twist and then bend it over. And I have, there have been situations where, speaking of breaking tabs, where I've twisted something, and it, especially early in 
building these models when I was getting started. Twisted something and it was still a little bit shaky so I tried to twist it harder because you know you're trying to fight a monster in a video game you press the button harder that makes a difference right? I tried to twist the tamp harder and ended up twisting it off which made a bigger problem so one of the first lessons that I learned was you know you want to get that twist right and pull and twist is often more helpful but you don't want to twist too much because you'll break the tab off and then you have nothing. And that inadvertently leads to this week's question of the week, which is kind of an extension, if you will, of that question. In the past few days, I've released my part one, part two, and review video for the Game of Thrones Drogon model. And in that model, I had a lot of difficulty with the neck and tail pieces and the body pieces because you are dealing with rounded shapes that have to connect tabs along those rounded areas. And when you're bending a part around with a tab, that tab is kind of swinging into the slot. So it helps to have a wider slot for that tab to swing into to connect. And the tabs aren't really any wider than normal. So it makes for a very difficult situation trying to get those tabs in place. And I made the comment in those videos and the re review videos how I wish that in models like that, Metal Earth would expand those tabs a little bit so that you had the room to slide things in. And I've seen that done with other Metal Earth models, and I've seen that done with other models out there, other 3D metal models. Now, in that video, I did get a few responses from people who were basically trying to say, you know, this is what I do, and I respect that as well. So this week's question of the week is, if you run into a situation where you have a tab that comes in at an odd angle or is on a tight fold, and you have difficulty getting it into place, how would you deal with it? Now I'll start by saying, Richard Kroll had commented on that video, I use a flat end jeweler's screwdriver to help open up tight slots. Put the part on a block of wood, rock the blade of the screwdriver back and forth in the slot using light downward pressure. This puts a very slight bend in the edge of the slot that can help funnel the tab into its slot. And that is an absolutely excellent suggestion. I like that. You're using the block of wood so you have some leeway for the metal to give rather than doing it open air where you could slip and punch a hole in things. And it also makes a slight channel. I respect that. It's a really good idea. I think I'm going to have to include that and try using that on some of my upcoming builds if I run into that problem again. Also from John Finnegan Jr. Hi Brad. For tabs that are hard to get into slots, I'll use a thin pointed punch or pointed tweezers to open the slots up for tab to slide into. Most times it works. Don't know if you have tried that. Great video. Good luck with the rest of the kit. Happy building. And that's something that I really didn't think of at the time that I could have done. And I have done in the past in situations mostly where in the rare situation where a slot is not formed big enough for the tab. And that has happened. It's pretty rare. Happened more with MU than with Metal Earth where I have taken one of my pointed tweezers and basically wedged it into the slot and wiggled it back and forth to kind of force it open. I could do a similar thing, and that's something that might be useful here. I really like the, the, the screwdriver idea, but yeah, using some sort of block of wood or flexible material or pad or something to put the part down on before you try to assemble it and pry it open, wedge it open with flat end of a screwdriver, with pointed tweezers, with some sort of punch tool to kind of open the tab up to more work, but you can end up with a better result. So these are some really great suggestions on, to, on how to address that situation. One of the ways that I have tried in the past with varying success is trying to bend the tab sideways and giving it a little bit of an angle to get into the part. And I have done that with some success and I have done that and basically made a bigger problem for myself. So I don't usually advocate for that solution but it is a possibility. It's difficult, it's easy to bend a tab this way. It's difficult to bend a tab that way. It causes a lot greater risk. But as far as opening up the slot, either angled wise or just making it wider to make things easier, that is a really great idea. So thank you very much, Richard and John, for sharing those ideas. So I'm interested how, or what are some suggestions of how you would deal with it? I can think of a few situations, not just this Dragon model where there's been difficulty getting tabs into angled slots or slots that come in at an angle. The, one of the TIE Fighter models, Poe Dameron's TIE Fighter, I believe, has, is very well known for the very beginning nose cone. You have difficulty getting those tabs in the slot and you kind of, one of my solutions is to kind of bend things out of, out of shape to get things in and then back into place. 
There's several other examples out there. I can't think of too many right off the top of my head. There was a Peace School model that I tried to build, and I never made a video before for it because I ended up breaking the part trying to force a tab in at an odd angle. With this trick, I think I could very easily and successfully make that model. One of these days, I will revisit it. I think it was the Gold Knight of Firmament that I started on but broke the headpiece because, again, it's tabs that come in very close at angles and it just wouldn't go into their slots. But how do you deal with it? I'd be interested to know. Leave your, you leave your answers in the comments down below. And that brings us to the end of this week's video. It is the beginning of another month, so I do want to take a moment to thank my current Patreon supporters very much for your support. So thank you, Andrew S., Chris Paskowicz, Giovanni Filardo, Hugh Morrison, Kaj Nielsen, Ken Crowen, Kendall Fargo, and Mon Hung for your support again this month for keeping this helping me keep this channel going give me the support to make these videos news videos build videos so on and so forth thank you very much for helping out if you enjoy these videos consider becoming a patreon supporter a little bit goes a long way thank you very much and always thank you for watching thank you for participating and keep on keeping on